Take your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Ruth. And uh, boy, I like this atmosphere. Appreciate the good music, all of it. Preacher Moore, Preston Moore, uh, down in the Atlanta area, he made the statement one time. He said, uh, A good choir doesn't make a good church. But he said, I've never had a good church, you didn't have a good choir. And I believe that. And I appreciate the music, I appreciate the right kind. I want to help you. And I don't want to be sacrilegious whatsoever. This atmosphere is conducive for preaching. And, uh, it's right, but I'm scared. And Dr. Tom Malone usually would take a text and read two or three chapters. And one time I asked him, I said, Dr. Malone, why do you read so much text and then you only use maybe one or two verses out of the text? He said, Tony, I'm trying to get enough courage to preach, he said. And sometimes I tell a few stories to loosen up. Somebody help me. And I want to communicate to you. Uh, my vernacular and vocabulary and accent sometime when I'm in third world countries like California. <laughs> I need an interpreter. And uh, it's hard to communicate. I heard about the little boy who went to Sunday school and his teacher was teaching on the evils of of drinking. And uh, she had a glass of water and, and had a, a glass of alcohol. And she took some worms and dropped those worms in that water and the little worms just swam around so ha happy. And then she dropped some worms over in the, the glass of alcohol and they died immediately. And she said, now boys and girls, what does this teach us? And little Johnny raised his hand and said, what is it Johnny? He said, it teaches us if you got worms, drink a lot of alcohol. He said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to communicate. I, I pastored in UCLA. That's the upper corner of Lower Alabama. That's in Bullock County, Alabama. It's way down south. And I pastored every many. I was invited to an all-black pastors conference, and I'd never been to an all-black pastors conference. And it's interesting. They they worship down there a little different than we do. And I mean, they they get with it. I mean, and I, I was scared to death. And I got in, and and they was excited. I mean. Preacher said, well, I come to Ted this morning, yeah. And Ogan said, zoo, zoo. And lady said, yeah. And then brother said, hey, man. And I like it. And he said, brother Tony's with us this morning, yeah. He said, come lay on us what God has laid on you. And I thought, now what God laid on me, I forgot 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I was scared to death. So I got my text owned up. I said, well, now I can't do like the brothers do, but I'll do the best I can. That lady said, yeah. That <laughs> organ said, zoo, zoo, right in there behind me. And I, want to, I want you to get a handle on the message. Amen. And one, one black church but down in the south, they were trying to update their services. And uh, so the deacons got together and they said, the preacher wants you to go to town and wants you to observe the services in town. And so they took a Sunday and got one of the younger preachers to fill the pulpit. And that pastor went to town and he went into church. He saw a big old beautiful cathedral of a church. Walked in and I mean the, the priest had on a robe. And that was impressive, all of it was impressive, all the candles. And at altar call time, about the time what we call altar call, here came these little boys walking down the aisle and had, had these pots and smoke was coming up out of them. And that really impressed that pastor. I mean, it was, it was added to that portion of the service. Well, he's watching it and he went down there and he, he asked the pastor, now what is that? He said, well, those are incense pots. He thought, man, I'm gonna take that home. Man, me. We're gonna have us some incense pots. Got back home, old country church, no air conditioning, had the windows up. I mean, just old country church, old Spanish moss hanging off the trees down there in South Georgia. And so they said, uh, how did it go, preacher? He said, oh, we had a good time. Said, but, but what impressed me most of all was at the altar call, they brought these little pots down and this, this smoke was coming up out of them. It's beautiful. And they said, what are they? He said, well, they were incense pots. They said, what were they? He said, well, they're gold pots. And they said, well, you know we can't afford gold pots. And he said, well, that just take some Maxwell House coffee cans and paint them gold. <laughs> and get some moss off them trees and put them down in there and start a fire. And when I get ready for it, I'll let you know. 
And they were used to that, that, that same song preacher, man. And he got them to the service and he hollered back there. He said, Bring me the incense pots. And nothing happened. They got to looking. He said, Bring me the incense pots. And still nothing happened. About that time, two deacons came over that aisle with their hands cut with nothing in them. He said, where be the incense pot? Oh, Joe looked up and said, we throw them out the window when the bottoms got hot. Praise God. <laughs> he had to get a handle on it. Start liking it, friend. Hey, man. Y'all all right? I want to help you. But you can't help somebody who won't get help. Amen. Ruth chapter number one. By the way, I appreciate your prayers for my health in recent days. I've been, been worried about my health. And uh, the other day, me and Tracy were walking. The, the, the weather's been getting warmer in Tennessee, but we've been enjoying the weather. And uh, we was walking around in the park holding hands. and I mean, just having a ball. She was looking at me, and I was looking at her. My wife, Tracy, you know, we're having a ball. And I saw Dr. Helton over there, and he hollered out, he says, is that you, Brother Tony? And I said, yeah, Dr. Helton, that's me. He said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I said, I'm doing what you said. Be cheerful and find a hot mama. <laughs> he said, that ain't what I told you. He said, I, he said, I said, be careful. You got a heart murmur. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, God has. And then all this good preaching. Brother Mark, man, y'all tore it down. I mean, from the very first service, Brother Cooper tore it down. And, and then, I mean, uh, really one of our best preachers in the South is Brother Gravely. And uh, he's one, one of our heroes. And, man, they preach it down. I heard about a fellow that went to the baddest man in Texas contest. Y'all probably heard about it. It's the baddest man in Texas. I mean, and it was no tour. I mean, there's bikers there. There's power lifters there. There's SEAL team members. I mean, I mean, it was it was bad dudes. I mean, just rough looking crowd. And they're going to give away a million dollars. And in that millionaire's pool there, they had alligators and crocodiles, and they had piranhas, and they had water moccasins, big old snapping turtles. They had all of that. And whoever could swim through there, get to the end of the pool from one end to the other, the fastest, they was going to give them that million dollars. And they were reading over the rules. While they were reading over the rules, announcing the awards, all of a sudden when he read the last word of the rules, he just heard kaploosh. He looked down here, come this fellow, I mean, I'm just speeding down through there. I mean, throwing snakes out like that, and just pitching piranhas out on the side, grabbing snapping turtles, just throwing them out on the side. Finally, he got to the end. All men, the reporters were there and ran up and said, Have you got anything to say? Man, congratulations. You won a million dollars. What do you want to say? He said, I want to know who pushed me in that pond down there. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, amen. I feel like somebody's pushed me in the pond today. Ruth, chapter number one, verse one. If you want to stand, you can. Page 315 in the Schofield. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. Our Heavenly Father, I need your touch tonight. And, and you know very well the adversity I face as I stand here this moment. The weight that I carry as I stand here this moment. And Lord, you the, you the God who can sustain. you the God who can lift you up when you're down. You're the God who can give you stability when you're fragile. And I pray right now, Holy Ghost, that you'd illuminate this great revelation of truth from your word. And I pray, God, you'd give me the backbone and courage and boldness to say everything that should be said in this Laodicean indifferent church age. And at the same time, I pray you'd give me a guard over my lips not to say anything that wouldn't exalt Christ, expose sin, exhort the brethren. And Lord, this congregation is no strange, stranger to the reality of my need. 
And so as I ask you now, I pray just as I desire to be filled and feel the touch of God as I preach, I pray you'd cultivate an appetite for spiritual things in the, in the minds and hearts of listeners. And how we're blessed in these modern days with technology that spans from, from continent to continent. And I pray even those that are listening in the foreign souls, Lord, that you'd use these messages that have been preached and the one I'm about to preach to give us in these last days light and direction, uh, to give us an, a bulldog tenacity not to cave in, not to be altered, not to be changed by the trends of society, the moderates, the compromisers. Help us to leave these walls with determination to leave that mark that was preached about this week. For we ask it now in Jesus Christ's name and may long live old time religion until you come again. Amen. You can be seated. There's a lot to say in the Bible about names and I, I, I don't always elaborate and, uh, and take exposition on the names of the scriptures when I preach. In fact, where I come from, I mean, man, it's hard to pronounce some of those Old Testament words. I need a witness. Somebody say amen. I mean, I have to listen to Alexander Score to be several weeks ahead just to learn how to pronounce them. Old B.R. Lakin used to preach, he'd come to a hard one, and if it started with a B, he'd just call him Bob, you know. And I heard him one night preaching in Atlanta, and he used to call one of those hard names, and he said, well, oh, 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 and he named him O.B. or Bob or whatever, and he said, wait a minute, he said, I'm going to see those people one day. Some of them, he said, I need to be a little more sober about that. And as I think tonight about this name, Elimelech, Elimelech. There's something about that name that's special. It means my God is the king. I think about his parents and the raising of Elimelech. Probably those nine months that she carried him, they began to toss around ideas. Daddy, what you want to name the boy? Well, I hope he's a boy. If he's a boy, I want to name him. And they began to toss around titles and handles and names and Finally, they came up with the name Elimelech. The name means my God is the king. What a name to carry. Really, it was a part of his heritage. He'd been given that from a child. And, and I think about the times of temptations. I think about the times of trial. I think about the times of testing. When he would cross paths with the wrong crowd and be tempted to do wrong. When he was in a time where it seemed like he didn't know which way to turn. And before he made the wrong decision, before he made the wrong choice, he would say, wait a minute, I better think about what I do here. I, I better think about how I react here. I, I better think about how I respond here because my name means something. My name was not haphazardly given me. My name means my God is the king. And I wonder, we look at him in an episode in verse 1 of his life. He's been successful. God has blessed him. He's of the tribe of Judah. He's got a, a goodly heritage. Psalm 16, 6 talks about my lines have fallen in good places. Man, I praise God I have a goodly heritage. He had something to hang on to through difficult times. I, he, he had a heritage he could hold on to through the times uh, that he really had doubt about the next step and maybe hesitant to say anything or do anything. Situations that would face him in life, he could always fall back. Uh, he could always say, wait a minute, man. I mean, I've got a special heritage. Uh, God has given me a special name uh, and I can always be reminded, uh, no matter how dark it may be, uh, no matter how much despair I may face, uh, no matter how steep the hill may come, and difficult my route may be in life. Thank God. I've got a God who's in control. My God, my God is the king. Thank God I like that. You know, we've been given some heritage. We've been handed down through generations. I think about parental heritage. My name's Hudson. My daddy never used that to to push me into line, but, but I, 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 I was aware of the fact of my heritage. And I didn't want to drag the Hudson name through the mud. I didn't want to cause shame to come upon my family, my grandfathers who fought in the Civil War and, and the Revolutionary War to give us freedom in this nation. My hard-working great-granddaddy and 
my papa and my daddy, that name meant something. And there were often times in life that, that I could have made wrong choices. I'm talking about times when nobody else was looking. Times when nobody else might have ever known. I, I'm talking about temptations that came to me. Hey, when nobody else would have looked down on me, I'd have just been falling in with the crowd. I, but I was a Hudson. Hudsons don't do that. But I've got a greater name. The Bible said they were first called Christians. That name was the name of mockery. That name was the name that they used as a negative con. You are old Christ like you, you acting like Jesus. They thought it to be derogatory, but praise God, that New Testament church wore it like a badge. Hey Amen. I'm glad to be called an old time Christian. I'm a fundamental, independent, Bible believing Baptist. And I know what all those, I know what every one of those mean. You listen to me, it's not just a, a name on a sign. It's not just some words that fill up our, our board on the outside. I know exactly what every one of those mean. We're living in an hour where we've lost our, our definition of our heritage. We really don't know what we are. I mean, you know, honestly, we've, we've got some, I believe, have tried to steal our identity. You know, I'm talking about stolen identity. Y'all know. I mean, they're saying there's something they're not. They're identifying with us, but they're not what we are. They may have a name Baptist, but God help, they're 10,000 miles from it. Amen. My God is the king. Man, think about that heritage, a parental heritage, a pastoral heritage. We've been given a pastoral. Thank God for leaders in our life who've, who've set a, a pace to follow and a path to try. Amen. Praise God. Paul said, be a follower of me as I'm a follower of Christ. Amen. I thank God for men who've influenced my life. I think about, I think about a prophetic, a biblical, the pages of God's Word. What a rich heritage we have in an inerrant, infallible, impeccable, indestructible, indispensable Bible. Amen. I've been preaching out of it for 32 years at one church. And several years prior to that, and it's an artesian well of truth. I've never come to the Bible and said, well, I'm run out now. I've got to go find something new. I, I've got to get, no, praise God. For, forever, O oh Lord. Forever, O oh Lord. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Amen. It's not running out. Amen. Thank God for the Bible. Amen. Think about my God. When I think about that name that he has, I mean, man, my God. It's, it's a name to, to consider. That whole, my God, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's words of consideration. Is he your God? Buried my granddaddy down in Elko, South Carolina. We went down by the Edisto River. We went there and went into the to Mount Calvary Baptist Church to bury him in that graveyard. And the pastor brought me in to, into his office. He said, I want to show you something. And he showed me the ledgers from the 1800s for Zachariah Taylor Hudson, my great, great, great granddaddy, was the clerk of the church and he had a beautiful handwriting and it showed where he handwritten where he had been saved, where, where folks had been saved and prior to him had handwritten ledger where he had been saved. It recorded my ancestors' conversions and baptisms. I felt something on it. I got to thinking, man, that was our God. You know, God the Father. God the Son. God the Father. God the Son. Don't get nervous now. God the Holy Ghost. No, don't, don't start playing down the Holy Ghost. And don't, don't any professor here ever say the third person of the Godhead. Who gave you that idea? He's co-equal, co-existent. The God, the Holy Ghost, is not some barefoot stepchild jockeying for position, looking for love in all the wrong places. No, he's God, the Holy Ghost. The Bible describes him. I praise God. I, he's Christ in you. It's a mystery. I, I speak concerning Christ in you. You got saved. You got baptized in the body by the Holy Ghost. He took up dwelling in your tabernacle. My God, is he your God? In a day of multiculturalism 
And in a day of polytheism where it seems like anything goes, a God every other day, some new God. I'm glad I, I worship tonight the God of the Bible. He has become my God. There was a time when he wasn't my God. Oh yeah, I know, I know what the universalists say. Oh, we're all children of God. No, you're wrong about that. We're all creations of God. We're only children of God by grace through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Boy, I like it. I like it. I like to be called daddy. Boy, I love daddy. I got one granddaughter, one red-headed granddaughter, fathered by one of the best young preachers in the country. I like to be called Paul. Somebody say amen. I like Paul. I like daddy. My wife calls me a lot of things. And she's a hot mama. But I tell you what title I like to be called, the son of God. What a divine relationship. Is he your God tonight? I've watched others before I ever got saved by the grace of God. I watched them worship their God. There was a sacredness about that old time worship. Brother Gravely, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you didn't make eye contact with somebody shouting in the Holy Ghost. If you was lost, you just kind of hunkered real still and looked down at the ground because you knew somebody bigger than you had done showed up in that place. Somebody bigger than the football coach. Somebody bigger than the, than, than the chief of police. Somebody bigger than the mayor. Somebody bigger than the governor. Somebody bigger than the president. Hey, somebody that moved in and you knew something was going on. Serious business, friend. My God, he wasn't my God. But I remember the night he became my God. What a good day in my life. I'd been under conviction seven years. You don't have to stay under conviction that long. But I was under the most miserable. I used to be eat my nails down in the quick. I mean, I'm talking about, man, I'd bite my nails in the quick. I'd, and they, 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 all the women in the church would come by and say, oh, said, uh, said, Jerry, that's my mama, said, Jerry, your boy's got worms. <laughs> they diagnosed me. I, don't, you know, I mean, I probably did. All we eat was salt pork. Somebody say amen. I mean, they'd, they'd predict me with every kind of problem, but what it was was Holy Ghost conviction. What I said was Holy Ghost conviction. Something wrong when you say that around these Christian schools, these kids don't know what you're talking about. Don't bow your head on it ready to pray yet. He's not your God, but you got to get lost before you can get saved. We've sang song after song. Every church service I've been in over the last two decades, we've sang a Kyla Faye Rowland song. One of her greatest songs was, I'm glad I got lost so I could be found one wonderful night. Do you remember when you was lost? Yes. Hey, does anybody remember when you was under conviction? Had a hard time sleeping at night? I remember we lived close to the railroad track in Tucker, Georgia. And I remember that the trains would come through. And in those 70s, those early 70s, I mean, Oliver B. Green was preaching the second coming. M.R. DeHaan was teaching the second coming. Mays Jackson was preaching the second coming. Every time you turned on the radio, it's about the trumpet's going to sound. How the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we were to our live nation. We caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord. And that, that, that horn would sound when they'd cross through Tucker. And I'd jump out of my bed. And I'd run into mom and daddy's bedroom because I knew they were saved. And I'd crack the door. And I'd look, man, whew, thank God that was just the train. There's a good day in my life when that fear left me. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power. And I trusted Jesus. Do y'all remember that? Does anybody remember that? Is he your God? My God. My God, that's something to consider. Has you had enough answers of prayer to claim that he's your God? You know, our Father which art in heaven. Have you had enough answers to prayer to, hey listen, to equate? Uh, do you have enough answers of prayer as evidence that you have a relationship with the heavenly Father? Uh, his name is our Father uh, which art in heaven. When's the last time your Father gave you anything? 
Open thy mouth wide and I'll fill it. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Matthew 18, 19, and I get us say unto you, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, had it shall be done for them of my Father, of my Father. Have you got a relationship? Your Father. Amen. Whom he loves, he chastens. Is he your father? I mean, can you just live in blatant disregard? There's a few attitudes in right here that God's not pleased with right now. I sense it. They think they're going to show me something, but they, don't, hey, they better think again, friend. Is everybody okay? I come in here to preach. A while ago, I was real nervous about it. Now, hey, I had butterflies in my stomach. Now they're flying in formation, praise God. <laughs> hey, Amen. Everybody okay? I'll come preach in your lap in a minute. Is everybody all right? Hey, hey, hey. When's the last time God whooped you for your spirit? He's going to. Be, hey, be not deceived. You're not going to mock God. Shout it out all week long and all of a sudden got the dead spirit on you. What happened? Same God. Everybody in preaching time. Hey, man, y'all all right, friend? I'm talking about friend. Hey, when's the last time he disciplined you? When's the last time? When's the last time he disciplined you? When's the last time you felt the hand of chastisement upon you? Hey, whom he loves, he chastens. And you're not chastened. If you're not chastened, you're illegitimate and not sons. Everybody okay? I'm talking about in these days that we live, this hour we live, do you have that relationship? Is he your father? Is he your father? Our father which art in heaven. Is he your father? When did you get saved? Most people that have a relationship, they have some papers that prove it. They got a place. You can't get saved without a place. Everybody gets saved has a place. It's called, one of them was the Damascus Road, you know. He had a specific road. Nobody ever gets saved and say, well, I've always been a Christian. It don't work like that. Well, I just one day just, I don't know how it happened. I just bumped into God. No, they got God. There was a place. There's a purpose. Is he your God? Listen to it. He said, my God. He said, my God. That's something to ponder. My God is. My God is. You know, he's a present God. He's not just the God of the past. I really believe there's a nostalgia uh, a, 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 a mentality of some of the religious people who just cloak and they read the Bible and thank God for the words of the Bible. Thank God. Hey, thank God for its, for its, its impeccableness. I mean, it's, it's right and it'll always be right. Bible ain't going to get messed up. But, but thank God in this hour which we're living, is he the God of the past to you? Are you just living on what he did? I'm glad I got saved. And he showed up. I mean, I got on the Holy Ghost conviction. Holy, I'm talking about, man, I, I'm talking about I got saved. What happened when I got saved, Brother Trevor? It was a miracle took place down in Alder. What happened? I, was, I got resurrected from the dead. I was dead in my trespasses and sins. I was dead. I'm talking about I, I, the natural man. I, I, was, I was messed up. I was dead. But the night I got saved, a resurrection took place. I got passed from death unto life. I got regenerated. I got born again. I got born from above. That was a presence of God. I don't know if he was present, but has anything happened since then? I know that he was the God that, that divided the Red Sea and they walked over on dry. I, have no, I know he was the God who formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. I know, I know that. I know, friend, that he fed the, the 5,000 on the seashores of Galilee with the loaves and fishes of a little lad. Hey, I know that one day, I know, I know that one day he's coming again. And he was the God of the past. And he will be the God of the future. Yeah, he's going to run right here for a thousand years. He's going to reign. I'm going to be the mayor of Murfreesboro. Hey, it's going to be prayer in schools again. Somebody say amen. It's going to be wonderful. But the God of the yesterday and the God of the going to be 
when he asked you, Moses said, when I go over yonder and I've got to identify myself and I've got to, got to be confronted by these unbelieving people, what am I going to tell them? What kind of authority am I going to come to him? He said, you tell them I am. Don't tell them I was. Don't, don't go tell them that I will be. He said, you tell them I am. That's a word of, of infinity. I'm talking about it has no beginning and it has no end. He's the I am. He's the great I am. Tell them the I am, that I am. The same God of the Old Testament is the same God today. I'm telling you, praise God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6 said, I'm the Lord and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not concerned. Is, is he your God? My God is. My God is king. Boy, he had something. He's the king. That's, that's a position. That's a coronation. Not only a, a, a God of confirmation is and, and a God of consideration, my God, but he's a God, he's a God who's crowned. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. His name is above every name. Let, let me help y'all during this days of political unrest and all of the turmoil. It ain't about who the president is. It's about who the king is. It, it ain't at all about who you, by listen friend, it ain't about who's, uh, who's ruling, it's about who's reigning on high. Yeah, on his head will be many crowns, Revelation 19 said. Out of his mouth will go a sharp two-edged sword. And on his thigh, praise God, will be written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His vest is going to be dipped in blood. Hey, when he comes back, every knee's going to bow. And every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And don't be misled, he's Lord now. Wherefore God hath made him both Lord and Christ. He's, he's in control of the affairs of men's life right now. When the moon's dripping blood and the gold turns to ashes and the mountains crumble as the sands of the sea, you can count on one thing, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise God. I don't want to be here all night, but there's a whole lot we could say about it. My God is King. Now stay with me. He had all that going for him. He had that great heritage. Everywhere he went around, Brother Ricky, it just reminded me, my God's king. What did you hear who they voted in? Biden and Harris, yeah, but my God's king. Yeah. Well, we got a liberal mayor who makes us swear. Man, I know, but guess what? My God's king. Yeah. And the Bible said that the king's heart's in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turned the woods over, he listed. But did you hear what happened? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Hold up. My God's still king. Nothing's happened. There's been no power stolen. The only power that's exercised in this world is delegated power. God says, I'll let you do that for a while. Amen. My God's king, can you imagine all of that given to him? And then a crisis comes. I mean, just a famine. Is, is this like it's some kind of a, a catastrophic event of biblical history? It happened all the time. In fact, I did a little research about the famine down at Bethlehem, Judah. You know, it means the house of bread. To me, it typifies within this application the will of God. He was in the will of God as long as he was by the house of bread. But a famine came, a crisis came, a fear came upon him. What are we going to do now? I, I'm amazed at the Baptist preachers who've made bad choices during this crisis. Some of these choices, unless God intervenes, you're never going to get over them. I've got people in my church, it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, tithers, never miss a service. But as soon as they felt a legitimate reason to stay home, because it's surely not, it's not a legitimate excuse. 
They, they just, as soon as they felt like they could stay on this, boy, I mean, well, brother Tony and everything, you, we just, we, it's just like being in church and all. We still feel things on the singing. We were sitting there crying the other night when you, oh, that was such a message. It just spoke to us over there while we were sitting in our pajamas on the couch <laughs> with our shedding dog in our lap. sacrilegiously worshiping. Y'all still here? And they said, and it sounds so good, you know. Oh, we just, and we're so comfortable there. Yeah, but you can feel God through the, through the waves. And you can shed some tears of emotion. But there's one thing you can't do, not forsaking the assembly. You can get all that other stuff in line. Hey, you get all, hey, you can feel God. I mean, you can, you can have an emotional stir. Hey, you can even make some decision. As a radio preacher preaches, as an internet preacher preaches, as a Facebook live preacher preaches, wait just a minute, Hoss. Hey, you, you, you are violating the scripture. The Bible said, not forsaking, not forsaking, not forsaking, not forsaking, not forsaking. You know, some of yourselves together. That's a matter of some is but so much the more. Not less, not less, but more. What, what bad choices he made. With all of that heritage, that had been, I'm talking about with time and toil, and strategically named, I mean, he had something to hold on to. And yet I'm watching the brethren in this hour begin to dip their colors because of a crisis. I did a little research, not one death was recorded in Bethlehem, Judah. You Bible students do your research. All it was was a scare. It was a ploy of the devil. We want you to go to Moab, the emerald in the sand, emerald. It's very attractive to the eye. It's appealing place, but it's surrounded with nothing. That's what the world has to offer you. Just a lure to get you in the middle of nowhere, going nowhere and doing nothing but dying in a desert place. Yeah, here it is, Moab. And, and, and I'm telling you, the tug of the world began to pull on him. And he made some bad choices. Can I tell you that the choices you make are going to affect more than you? The Bible said he went to sojourn, verse 1, in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. But the Bible tells us in verse 2 that he came to the country of Moab and he continued there. It'd be real bad if I died out of the will of God. I wouldn't want to die of the will of God. I believe I'm in the will of God, pastor in Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. I believe I'm in the will of God, traveling as God opens the doors for me to go. It'd be awful for me to get out of the will of God. I mean, that'd be terrible. It'd be bad if me and Brother Mark was to get out here tonight after the service, we're real nervous, and fire up a Winston <laughs> behind the buses, you know, where your deacon smoke. Somebody, <laughs> we've, already seen, we've already seen the butts. And we fired one up. You know, just to calm us, man, it's nervous, nerve-wracking. This is stressful. Help me. But you know what would be worse? If I was to say to Mark, go call your boys and I'll get Troy out here. And let's show them how to smoke one. Let's show them how to blow smoke rings. It's awful enough if you die in Moab, but when you take your family with you there. What a tragedy. Well, we're only just going to visit the service one time. You know, they're not exactly. If it don't say Baptist on the sign, I doubt it is one. If it don't say church on the sign, I doubt it is one. <laughs> Upon this rock, I'll build my church, not worship center, not, not outreach center, not fellowship hall. <laughs> Upon this rock, I'll build my church. <laughs> and the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. We're just going to visit that happens every Christmas. Every Christmas. Well, we won't be here Sunday night because uh, my grandson, he's playing Joseph in the play at the Christmas play. 
And so they're just going to go to Moab. Just, you know, for that one service. Because they've let their grandson grow their hair out long. So he, so he could look like Joseph. If I was a papa or a mama in this building, and I went to the Christmas play, and they opened up a book, and it didn't sound just exactly like Luke 2 sounded in the King James, I'd make sure my insurance was paid up. And I'd stomp out the door, and I'd slam the doors, hopefully that the, the stained glass would rattle. And I'd get outside, and I'd rip it up, and I'd drop the clutch, and, and I'd lay tracks all the way out the parking lot. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and squall them coming down the drive. Amen. So when my grandson got home, he'd say, Mama, what, what got Papa so bothered? She knows what's got Papa bothered. Why'd you let her date that thing anyway? Why'd you let her go to that church anyway? Why'd you let her hang around that crowd anyway? Hey, you're reaping what you sow, friend. Hey, be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Hey, she never had no business running with him anyway. Now that's what you got. I wouldn't want to die with any question. I'd want to let them know Papa's not for that other book. And on and on and on and on and the beat don't stop to the break of dawn. Somebody help me. Y'all listening? Man, that'd be awful to lose your family with a heritage. Man, we've been handed down a rich heritage. It's been elaborated on throughout the week. Man, praise God, our methods, our music, the mantle. You made some bad choices. I've seen a lot of preachers make bad, I've seen a lot of lay people make bad choices. And it's not going to end up like everybody tells you it's going to end up. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It always looks right. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends are the ways of death. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understandings in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, acknowledge him, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Well, I don't think it'll hurt just one time. That's what he thought, we'll sojourn. God's given me possession back in Bethlehem, Judah, in the land of bread, he, he, at the house of bread, he had, a, he had land. He had a business. He had a name. He had a name. They knew him, Boaz. You know, nobody died. Nobody. Boaz made it through. Boaz made it through the famine. What about that? Isn't that just a coincidence and everything? Boaz made it. Hey, you get around where Boaz, the type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hey, you'll be safe hanging around where Boaz is. Bad choices. But he's not the only character in this text. Here's one of the tribe of Judah who made temporal choices. But then there's a Moabitess. Her name's Ruth. The same pandemic, the same famine, the same trouble, the same unrest, the same fears. And all she had ever heard was just a little bit about it. Maybe at Christmas time they would reminisce on how it used to be back home. How it was in the will of God. They'd talk, man, you remember when we used to, yeah, back in, back in Bethlehem, Judah. How it used to be when we were in the perfect will of God and how God met all of our needs and God blessed us. But peer pressure, maybe parental pressure, maybe the partner that he was mated with. Hey, oh, oh, Naomi said, listen, let's just go over there for a little while. Everybody else is going over there. I, I mean, man, it won't hurt anything. I, we won't stay over there, daddy. I, we'll just go for a little while. But he said he sojourned and then he dwelt there. And 10 years later, a decade. That's how it happens when you get out. Some of you think you can get out of the will of God and just jump back in. 
Bible said when a man draweth the break, hey, when he when he jumpeth the law, he breaketh the hedge. You go to jumping over, you can't get back as easy as you think you can. You get out of the will of God, you break down the hedge. Man, sometimes you can't just hop up back in the will of God. Sometimes there's excess baggage you bring back. I mean, there's haunts of the past. There's scars that you carry mentally and physically for the rest of your life. You think, man, there's nothing to it. I'll just run down there and get it. It ain't that easy, friend. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, that's right now. He'll of the flesh reap corruption. Oh, God help us. Don't be so naive to this crowd who's compromising that you think you just jump back in. There's consequences of sin. He dies out of the will of God. Man, God help us, I do not want to do that. I'd rather be criticized by every liberal. I'd rather be attacked and balked while I'm preaching than to, than to compromise my message and dip the colors and die saying I wished I had instead of I'm glad I did. But there's a woman there named Ruth. Y'all know the story. You can make good choices during difficult times. I study your life and the Bible says after all of the, the pessimism of her mother-in-law, stay here, worship your God, stay with your sister-in-law. Listen, I can't have children, I can't bear another son, it's hopeless, just, just stay here. I've went out full and coming back empty. Why don't you just stay here? She said, no, I want to go back to where it was full. I've only heard you talk about I went out full. What was it like being full? What was it like when you got full and you felt something? Tell me about that. I've just heard about that. And begin to stir up an appetite. Blessed are they. Blessed, blessed are they that hunger, that hunger and thirst after righteousness. She didn't even know anything about it. Just something about I went out full. How was that full? Tell me, tell me, mom in law. Hey, Naomi, how was that full business? Tell me, tell me about being full. All I've ever known is Moab and sinfulness and a wicked life. All I've ever known is God's judgment on your husband. God's judgment on my, on my on mine. God's judgment on our family. All I want to know something about that full part. Same family. And she said, I want to make some choices. Notice what she said in verse 16. She said, uh, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. Can I tell you a good choice right now, preacher, to make? Is choose a scriptural avenue. There's all kind of exits on this highway of life. There's all kind of neon signs, new and improved. Why don't you just stay with whether thou goest? I'll take the old highway. I'd rather be an old time Christian. Whether thou goest, I'll go. She made a choice. She said, I, I, I haven't experienced all of it yet, but I've heard about it. I've heard about that place where you were full. I heard about the blessings of God. I sure would like to experience some of that. Some of us have yet to experience what we've read about. What we've desired, what we've seen, what we've bur our hearts have burned within us. And, and we've not yet, but I tell you what, you're never going to find it if you get off the road. You better stay on that road of the will of God. That's the will of God. The Bible said that it's not be under, unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What about that? I beseech you, therefore, bread by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, except on God which is reasonable, sir. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your minds that you may prove that which is good. That acceptable and perfect will of God. Bethlehem Judah is a picture of the will of God. The will of God, look at me friend, is good and it's acceptable and it's perfect, but ain't nobody ever said it's easy. 
It's hard to stay in the will of God when your family don't want to walk in the will of God. Your family that you've raised and prayed over. Amen. When your friends don't want to walk in the will of God. It's hard to stay in that perfect will of God. It's a perfect will. But good's not easy. Them walk biscuits, that's, that has nothing to do with Italians. Somebody help me. A walk biscuit is one of those that you take the paper off and hit it on the side of the counter and they just jump out of the can. They're fine if you ain't got nothing else. Hey, but them homemade biscuits are better. They're good, but they're not easy. You got to get shortening on your hands or what we call lard at home. That's a spiritual term. Somebody say amen. <laughs> you you got to mix it. You got to work it up. It's not easy. You got to set the temperature. It takes a little longer to cook. That, that, that good acceptable. That means you have to prove it one time. Sometimes the will of God, you have to exercise. You have to exercise faith to, to, to be in the will of God. You have to prove it. We said all the time, you prove. My daddy grew up yours, prove it. We'd double dog dare people stuff. I remember jumping out of barns about as high as that. that honestly, I've jumped out of, I've jumped out of lofts higher than this balcony. Barefooted as a jaybird. Everybody okay? But I tell you, I never was first to jump out. My cousin Troy, I'd say, Troy, you go first. He'd say, you scared? I said, no, I ain't scared. I'll do it if you do it. You know about the will of God, sometimes you've got to prove it. You've got to see that it worked for somebody else. Amen. It's acceptable. It's perfect, but it's not easy. On the road back, she said, where thou goest, I'll go. She chose a scriptural avenue. She said, where thou lodgest, I'll lodge. She chose a Christian or a scriptural abode. That picture of lodging, it's a picture of, it's a, it's a picture of permanence. It's a picture of setting up house. Can I say to you young folks, don't let, don't let this old time religious be a temporary tour for you. Don't just follow the pastor, but lodge where he lodged. We, we go hunting sometime, we'll treat a raccoon, shoot him out of the tree, he'll hang in a fork, we call, he's lodged up there, we can't get him out. It ought to be that us that's been tasted this old time religion, hey, when that neo-evangelical crowd, that liberal crowd, that contemporary crowd, those compromising grandkids and kids go to pull it on you, say, pull all you want to, bless God, I done hung up in this thing. I, I ain't going nowhere. I, in light of the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I, therefore, my beloved brethren, I, be steadfast, I, unmovable, I, unmovable, unmovable, and always abounding at the work of the Lord. I, was much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Unmovable. Where thou lodgest, I, I'll, I'll set up. I'll take residence. It won't be temporary. Naomi, where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Thy people will be my people. You ought to choose the right acquaintances. All these bunch of liberal writers and Calvinists. Some of you ain't smart enough to eat the meat and spit out the bones yet. You better be careful who you read after. You ain't far enough along to handle it. Next thing you know, you'll be a purity five-pointer. Somebody help me. Well, I like their typology. Hey, I like the Bible's typology. Somebody help me. I like the Holy Ghost to teach me some typology. We rely on pens of the past, and it's not always those sacred pens either. But be careful. Some of these prophets will lie to you. Hey Amen. That's what he said. That older prophet told that younger prophet, said, the Lord told me just for you to stay here. Sounded so good. It, said, it was exactly what that younger prophet wanted to hear. You better get some old time acquaintances. These names that Brother Gravely gave other night, you should have been writing every one of them down. And I'm Googling the, Google the fire out of them, friend, and find some preaching, friend. It's got, hey, some of this preaching today, they call it preaching. It ain't got enough fire to warm a chigger's feet. Somebody say amen. Y'all all right? 
Ain't got enough power to blow the fuzz off a peanut. <laughs> thy, thy people. I'm glad, praise God, in my youth I made some choices. Amen. My daddy sheltered me from a lot of the brethren, but the ones he introduced me to, they became my people. Amen. If daddy endorsed them, that was the ones I wanted. I'll never forget what daddy said about Brother Sammy Allen. We were sitting on the back porch, he was dying, daddy was dying. It's 1994, just about the turn of the new year. I, I named over different names. I said, Jack Hiles. He said, church builder, motivator. I said, give me just a character, just a, just a little review. I got to Sammy Allen. I said, Sammy Allen. He said, never changed. I said, glory to God. You know what I want to be? Steadfast. Amen. Over in Kentucky at Lexington, the great racetrack, there was a groom. He was in there brushing down an old nag. Had a sway back, never had run or won a race, and big Texas horse owner came through with a cigar. I said, Say, son, said, can that horse do anything fast? That groom just kept on brushing, said, Yes, sir. Said, he can stand fast. <laughs> and having done all to stand, and having done all to stand, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. She made some good choices. Thy people will be my people. Thy God will be my God. She chose a scriptural authority. Why don't you just lock in? Man, we serve a risen Savior. And quit worrying about offending people with our deity. Well, you know, as long as you worship God in the 21st century, it's acceptable. It's when you specify deity. In the Old Testament, it's the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. In our day, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Triune God, a trinity. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't even give respect. When, when Elijah was, uh, was opposing the prophets of Baal, he mocked them. Now, those millennials can't stand that kind of talk. He laughed at them in their face, said, where's your God at? Oh, maybe y'all need to cry a little bit louder or try some Christian tattoos. Some of that self-mutilization, some of that demonic stuff with needles jobbing in you and ink running off of you. Hey, man. Get his attention that way. Try it. Hey, he mocked them. We're so now. Hey, we've give, we give credibility to false gods. It ought to make us laugh. Somebody talking about praying to Buddha. Are you kidding me? When's the last time he answered anything? Y'all here? I'm almost through. Thy God will be my God. She said, where thou diest, I'll die. And I'll be buried. She chose a scriptural alternative. We're going to die somewhere. I don't want to die too right now. I mean, I'd like to live a little longer. I wish my, my, my you know, I kind of wish Tennille and Andrew would figure out, you know, about having more grandkids. Y'all okay? I'm enjoying being Papa. One of the greatest, greatest events of the last three years of my life was when I become Papa. They always, I look like a Papa. Make me mad. I'd go in there and take Troy to get something for Christmas. Say, hey, Papa brought you in. I'd say, yeah, and I want, I want a senior discount. Somebody help me. <laughs> You're going to accuse it. I'm going to get the benefit of it. <laughs> We're all going to die on some battlefield. Why don't you earnestly contend for the faith? You got choices. And, and everybody in the family ain't going to like it. They're going to look at you funny at Christmas. When your wife's dressed modestly. And they come in looking like something that the cat drug in. Look like Madonna out of hell. Somebody say amen. Ain't got enough clothes on to clean out a 10 gauge shotgun. But why don't you just say, I'm going, to die on, I'm going to die with this book. It's your choice. Let's stand together all over the house.
We have a great heritage. During difficult times, you got two ways to go. There's always a Moab. 2021, 2022, and guess what? There'll be a crisis in 2023. And there's always going to be an alternative to the right way. With God's help, why don't we say we're going to leave this place tonight with our hearts determined. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's a predetermination. We're going to leave here, and if God will help us, we're going to stand, and having done all to stand. When the crisis come in our lives, and they'll come. They'll be cri- I- I'm going through crisis tonight that I never thought I would ever have to face. I mean, it was the, the wildest thing from my mind. I'm going through situations of pastor that I never thought, never thought that would happen in our church. You got two ways to go. You can go God's way. It's a sad thing when a man from the tribe of Judah chooses a temporal way and a Moabitess in the middle of the same situation chooses an eternal way. Our Heavenly Father, take this message tonight and I pray it would fall on the good ground of the heart. We're living in perilous times. We're living in an hour where it seems like no doubt the sun is setting on the age of grace. I'm asking you right now to help us. Help us like Naomi going back home. What an influence she had. I went out full, but I I'm coming back empty. Just that little testimony began to work an appetite in the heart of Ruth. And she goes back, and man, the lineage of our Lord and Savior is affected by her choices during times of pandemic, famine. And I pray today we'd be realizing that every choice we make is going to have an eternal effect. If there's any loss tonight in this room, I pray old time conviction would show them their need of a Savior. Don't let a person leave here undone. By the way of the internet access, I pray tonight for those that are listening on foreign souls, some of them may for the very first time tuned in to any kind of preaching like this. I pray that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost would reach through these airwaves and touch that heart that's closest to hell and let them be saved for it's eternally too late. Bless, bless Dr. Treber in this good place and all these brethren, what they represent. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Appreciate it.